Hi, it's Dr. Gemma. Uh, I wanted to record some of the strategies that I've used in my podcast, Cognitive, which I started in 2008. And in the 11 years since, I've treated a lot of people in my uh, practice as a clinical psychologist. And I've treated oh, you know, everything from people who are in locked inpatient to outpatient. And in those years, I've had the privilege of treating people who are considerably more healthy than the people I was treating when I started the podcast. And so I thought maybe it's a good time to update some of the strategies. Many people have asked me to do short presentations of just the strategies as apart from the rest of the content of the podcast. I think that's probably a good idea. So here's my first shot at it. So as an introduction, I want to talk about the two major reasons people come into therapy. The first reason is what I call the dog can't play the piano, and I'll come back to that. But the second reason is really key, because understanding this is probably going to give you the ability to start looking for a therapist for help. And that is a very simple thing, and it is this. It is perfectly okay to be who you are, and you are a fine person, and it's okay to be you. And a lot of people come into therapy because they think it's not okay to be themselves. They're getting that message. And that's because they're confusing something. And that is, they are confusing it's okay to be who you are with uh, managing behaviors that make their lives difficult. So I'm going to use the simplest example I know of that I use all the time. I mean, seriously, I do this five or six times a week in practice to explain what I'm about to say. All right, so here we go. Are you ready? Now you see who I am right now. All right, everybody ready? Okay, now I've changed who I am. How? Well, now I can't legally drive a car. So I can't respond to an emergency by getting in my car and going anywhere. I can't take myself to a doctor or anything like that. That my eyes are such that I cannot legally drive without glasses. That's even on my license. God forbid a cop pulls me over and I have the glasses off. By the way, I don't wear contacts. So whoever's making that excuse, knock it off because you're just ruining a good example and you're doing it on purpose. All right, so now what's really going on here is it's, it's a sort of situation I have that um, I'm cross-eyed, okay? And now everybody who's watching this is staring at my eyes, trying to see that I'm cross-eyed. So let me help you. First of all, it's this eye and it goes up. It doesn't do that number, it goes up when I'm tired and not paying attention. It used to do it all the time, but it has been surgically corrected four times in my youth. My last surgery, I think I was 14. Okay, so a lot of surgery to get that corrected. So yeah, I looked pretty freakonomics when I was a kid, you know. And uh, as you can see, this doesn't exactly bother me. I'm laughing about it. I've had 59 years to get used to it, guys. Sooner or later, one does grow up and one does accept reality. But what I want you to tell is you really can't tell unless I'm tired, number one. But number two... Even in this moment, it is affecting me. The rest of the room is now out of view. I can pretty much see what I'm looking at right now, but I can't see too much further, all right? Now, here's the interesting thing. Now that we all know I'm cross-eyed and we've all had a good look and we'll have another good look because I keep hitting the camera and joggling it. Uh, now that we know that, am I evil in a moral sense? Am I a bad person? Well, of course I'm not. I'm just cross-eyed. I mean, it's no different than saying my eyes are green or, you know, my skin is um, kind of pale pink, okay? It just is. It's just a, it is what it is. It's a part of me. Has it always been a part of me? Nope. Uh, to be honest, I was told by a doctor once this was a birth accident, which makes sense based on, you know, there were some, some issues around my birth. And so the reality is I was born at 1.30 in the afternoon. Well, apparently at about one o'clock, I was just fine. I had 20-20 vision. Unfortunately, something went tragically wrong in the birth canal and I came out cross-eyed. All right. So that is it. So now, does this make me a bad person? Of course it doesn't. It's just an accident of birth. It just is. It's a physical condition, like the color of my eyes or my skin or my hair color, whatever color that is. Okay. So it's really important to realize I'm perfectly fine. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm a perfectly good person the way I am. Okay. There's, there, I, it's okay to be who I am. However, it is not okay to drive in, the, in my current condition, okay? So while there's nothing wrong with me, I'm a perfectly reasonable person. I'm just a cross-eyed reasonable person. There's nothing wrong with me. However, uh, I do have an issue, you can call it a problem if you want to, that interferes with my life as it is lived. And so I must do something about it. And here's what I do. Now, please note, I still am cross-eyed. 
uh, with the glasses, you have a slightly less chance of noticing it, I tell myself. I don't know. Sunglasses, of course, help. But the reality is I'm just as cross-eyed as I was before I put the glasses on. But now I'm managing it. All right. So now I can, you know, live a pretty normal life, drive a car, whatever, as long as I keep take care of the glasses and keep the glasses on or wear contacts or whatever. So I have not changed as a person. I have not changed morally. I have not changed my social values or my moral values. All I did was use a tool to manage a biological issue in my life that is simply a part of me. And there's still nothing wrong with me. That, in other words, I'm still a perfectly good person. I'm still, a, you know, just fine. And, and so I'm still a good human being, worthy of love and able to give love. I just have this situation that I manage. And that's what mental health is. Just like the being cross-eyed, uh, from time to time in mental health, even healthy people have situations they need to manage. It can be anything from I'm having a divorce and I'm really upset, I don't know how to tell the kids, down to I'm, I'm bipolar or I'm schizophrenic or I'm de clinically depressed or clinically anxious. These are situations, okay? You're still a perfectly good person. You still deserve love. You're not doing anything wrong. You just are what you are. But like my being cross-eyed, you will have to manage it. And so you have to start making decisions about what you're going to do. And that's where the behavior comes in. A lot of people say, this isn't fair and I shouldn't have to manage it. Well, unfortunately, the world isn't fair. So you might be morally right, but, you know, I still can't drive a car unless I put the glasses on, okay? So a lot of us spend our times trying to make other people manage what is essentially our problem, okay? And so people get into therapy because one way or another, they realize that other people are not going to manage it. The other people may not even know how to manage it. And yet those people want to love you, but they don't know how to manage what is your situation. So you come into therapy and that's really a mature thing because you're actually deciding, hopefully, that you are now going to use the tool to manage your situation that is within you and so you will be needing to manage it all right so why don't people just dance into therapy well because they're so afraid they're going to come into therapy and i'm going to say <gasps> your name a problem divorcing uh depressed anxious so you're a bad person oh my goodness no if any therapist is saying that to you please get up and flee um you know there are moral choices that people are forced into therapy about I'm not talking about abuse here. I'm talking about just conditions like depression, anxiety, whatever. So no, no therapist is going to say to you, you're bad because you have this situation. It's not our job to judge. But the therapist is going to say, what are you willing to do to manage this situation? So what we do is we work in behaviors. You must now choose a tool, which hopefully we can offer you, in most many cases we can, but you must choose a tool to manage your situation, okay? And that's what therapy is about. Let's, let's look at the tools we have to see if we can help you manage your situation. But a therapist isn't going to tell you you're a bad person because you have this problem. Uh, you know, I, again, and I, I am not including things like uh, abusing other people, harming other people, okay? I'm, I'm really talking about the more standard stuff. So, you know, criminal stuff, that's, I'm not a cop. I'm not a lawyer, you know, that's, that's not my wiki up most of the time, all right? So the reality is, is if you're not going to therapy because you're just so afraid of rejection, please, um, I've worked in all sorts of places. I really don't think after this many years in practice, you've got much that's going to make me reject you. I may have to refer you. I may say, for example, I don't do addiction, so I'll send you to somebody who does. But, you know, it's not the job of a therapist to reject you. You really are a good person. You really are okay. Okay. You really deserve love. You're really okay. So it's really okay to be who you are. However, you may have to manage some very difficult situations and that's what brings people into therapy. But I want to tell you that by and large, the vast majority of people who are watching me here, it is okay to be who you are. You are a valuable and lovable person and you also have the infinite capacity within you to give love to other people. And so that's what I want you to know, is that you are lovable, you deserve love, you really are, it really is okay to be who you are. And if you have some kind of chronic illness, 
PTSD, bipolar, schizophrenia, whatever. It doesn't matter. It really is okay to be you. But like me with my crossed eyes, it's okay for me to be a cross-eyed woman. But I have to manage the issue because it does interfere with my normal social function in terms of I can't go driving and I can't, I trip over a lot of things and I can't see things very well without the glasses. And that, my friends, is what therapy is there for. So there we go. I hope that helps. And uh, everybody stay safe, take care of each other, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.